If you haven't yet gotten your copy of Black Sails, the Stars series, on either DVD or Blu-ray, I would highly recommend that you do so sooner rather than later. They are going to get rid of this series because there's something in it they can't have getting out. Now, I've made mention of this over the last four to six weeks. In today's video, I'm just going to put it to you plainly. The idea of independence, liberty, sovereignty, and freedom, those things are now seen as vice, not virtue. The powers that be no longer value those things. In this series, though, the exact opposite is true. It is seen as virtuous to rebel against authority. And how that's the direction forward, well, after watching President 46 speak last night, I think we can all agree that they have no intention of letting anyone believe that liberty or freedom doesn't come from them. If we're going to be independent, if we're going to be autonomous and have liberty and freedom, it's going to be up to us. That's why the catchphrase of the series was war against the world. Now, some might have said, that's confusing to me, Florida Maki, because you've also said over the last couple of weeks that uh, you're not for the whole cryptocurrency thing because you think it's a scam, but that's a currency that gives everybody freedom. Wrong. It absolutely does not. It's the whole Robin Hood argument. You see, these pirates were largely robbing from the government and giving back to the people, not other people. Let me say that again. This is a big argument that people get confused when it comes to Robin Hood. Robin Hood didn't steal from the rich and give to the poor. Robin Hood took tax money that was stolen by the government and then gave it back to the people. Cryptocurrencies beg people for their money to inflate their Ponzi scheme. These pirates would have been ashamed to do this. So that's the difference. But earlier today, after about a two-week hiatus, the Patriot Nurse echoed virtually all of these sentiments. She lays out in plain English what's going on on these platforms and why places like Subscribestar, which I'll be very honest, I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge about, I'm going to look into, but Patreon I do. Places like this are going to be where we have to go in the future because the entire economy of it will be self-contained. Much like was in the Caribbean back in the 17th and 18th centuries with the pirates, they had their own economies going on. They really didn't need England all that much or Spain or France or Italy. That's what we're going to have to create, our own economies. And if you don't think it makes a difference, it was only about a month or maybe two ago that I started talking about what's happening with the Patriot Nurse, how they have demonetized and deleted videos of hers that were 10 years old, and how it's really hit her hard in the pocketbook. Well, in just a matter of a couple of months with only a few videos, her numbers have gone from 1,592 patrons to 1,704. That's over 100 people that probably just didn't even know about it. Now, given that she has 472,000 subscribers on YouTube, you can see why alternative platforms like BitChute and Odyssey and Rumble and all that, they're not an answer. They're absolutely not an answer because they just can't compete with the reach. So, if you can, please support because this is where we are going to have to survive. And that's what's going to have to occur at least until something changes at the top and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Now, an alternative platform 
that I think probably deserves a lot more attention than what it gets is Twitch. It's a gamer's platform. It was largely created for kids to go online, they'll play a video game, and then they'll talk with their friends. Well, adults, generally speaking, do the same thing. Sometimes, instead of playing video games, we'll watch a football game, or we'll watch some show, and we'll sit around uh, the living room, and we'll have conversation, or whatever, play cards. This is exactly the same thing, where you can see me in the upper right, and then you can see way over to the far right, there's a whole bunch of people having a wonderful conversation about just about anything, really. And you can engage with me personally and ask me questions about virtually anything you want to. So, Patreon, Twitch, excellent places to go. Also, there's a new player in the game. They're not really new, but they are for me. It's called Vimeo. Now, Vimeo is different. Vimeo is actually a video hosting platform that YouTube doesn't have access to. Meaning over there, I can talk about and show images of things that are probably R-rated or more. And I have every intention of doing so in the future. Now it, of course, is a platform like any other you'll be able to access it through patreon and some of you will see the difference in the player um it's kind of a complicated thing i don't have time to explain it here today because this is in our antarctica video but science has already established a great many things about antarctica number one 80 percent of the world's fresh water is there number two Volcanic soil, known for being the best growing soil in the entire world. It used to be a rainforest. All of those things are established fact. But they've also established that, without any doubt, that there has never been any native inhabitation of the continent. How they can know that, not having explored it, to my mind, is, is boggling. It's just absolutely crazy. I don't know how they can say such a thing, given the size of it. What if there were a civilization that had survived under the ice all this time, out of the sight of the world as a whole? It talks about in the Bible... King Solomon receiving a ship every few years from a place called the Wedge of Ophir. And it was laden with gold and sandalwood and silver and great many other things. One of the things that they also mentioned was apes. Now, when the pirates came to the New World, they described things, and when explorers came as well, that people in Europe just didn't believe. They thought it was just all hokey. It was all make-believe. But one thing is for, sure, for certain. Every day we are seeing these articles. And if it hadn't been for governments taking over media, this would be the most important story going on around the world right now. Scientists found a cradle of life under Antarctica. Nearly 100 species were found living in extreme cold and total darkness beneath the ice in one of the world's least known habitats. Life was found about 200 meters below the extra ice shelf. Quote, this has massively increased the known species from this least known habitat. This may give us clues into how life in polar seas survived glaciations. And then also, included in this article, they show this brand new, beautifully preserved dinosaur embryo spotted in an egg. And so despite living three to nine kilometers, two to six miles, from the nearest open water, an oasis of life, meaning it's not connected to the ocean, an oasis of life may have existed continuously for nearly 6,000 years under the ice shelf. 
Now, does that jive with some things that we've seen? It absolutely does. Remember my reference to the Wedge of Ophir and things that they brought to King Solomon? See, some have said that the Wedge of Ophir refers to a, a path taken by a ship that went around the Cape of Good Hope and then went to India and then went to Burma and Indonesia and then ended up in the Philippines. Well, nobody asks, were the people of those regions just handing the stuff over for Solomon? Can somebody explain this? This is an image in Antarctica, and I'll give you the coordinates. It very clearly looks like an ape, a gorilla of some kind. You can even make out the facial features. It might look like it might be holding a baby underneath here. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I don't know how anyone could say this is a shadow or a trick of photography, given everything else around it. So you can't see anything else around here that is misshapen or bizarre or weird. What is this? And could the Wedge of Ophir have referred to a ship going every three years to what we know to be modern-day Antarctica? There are discoveries all over this continent. This region is just completely full of them. You can see what looks like a stairway here. Almost a human face here. Some type of a, a temple structure. And once again, more 90-degree angles, things that look like buildings, cave entrances, openings, all over the place. And it really doesn't matter where you go. You can find these things. I mean, this is really clearly a building that it's kind of a strange thing to describe. A lot of people say, oh, I don't believe in global warming. Well, man-made, man-enhanced, did we have something to do with it? Possibly. Could we have stopped it? Likely not. But will there possibly be advantages? Sure. This is one of them. That we might be able to see things in Antarctica that we haven't seen before. There was a channel that at the time was called uh, Hypnotech that had brought me this discovery. I believe it's called Void Tech now, I'm not sure. Just the side of a mountain. Pretty nondescript. But then all of a sudden, this giant platform opening in cave. And you can see what very much looks like a ship. Some type of a craft setting on this takeoff and launch platform. People forget Antarctica is not a little island. It's a continent bigger than all of Europe. And this last thing that I'll show, I don't know how anybody can not see this. Actually, this isn't the last thing I'll show. I have one more thing after this. This is clearly the bust of some ancient male figure. You have the large beard, you have the mouth, you have the nose, the eyes, the forehead, everything. And if, if this doesn't convince you, what's this perfect square thing right next to it? Wind, ice, rock, and snow does not do this. There's just no way. Absolutely no way. And let me see if I can find... Oh, here we go. 
Now, yesterday, we had gone to this region, and there were all sorts of what are very clearly surface events going on here, activity on the surface. You can see buildings, you can see cave openings, you can see created structures. But what I didn't notice yesterday was how close this was to another huge structure that I had found in another video. This giant port right here. I mean, clearly somebody has cut this through the ice and made an enormous, enormous port structure. And this is just literally right here. So there may be those, meaning other governments, that know all about this, that have had contact. And maybe it's been that the people that are here don't want contact with the outside world. And they've just done a very good job of keeping people from coming here because perhaps, just perhaps, they might know something. Or they might have technology that's beyond us. And I'm sure a lot of people look at this like, well, that kind of looks like a crack in the ice, McKee. I don't know if I would call that definitely a port structure. There's supposedly just this random iceberg out here. Just a random iceberg that's almost perfectly shaped that is right at the mouth of it. That points right to it. This would clearly be some kind of a harbor device that would control the ships going in and going out. Diverting one one way and one the other. And this iceberg hasn't moved in any layer. It hasn't even changed shape in any layer. And like I said, it points directly to it. So there's to my mind, there's absolutely no way anybody, given the amount of things that we have found in Antarctica, could state conclusively that there was never any human-like habitation on this continent. But yet they do. The evidence is just too great. The evidence is just too great. No matter what you look at. So in the coming days, we'll be doing a lot more of these videos. It might be the only thing that YouTube allows, but... Once again, for the case of survival, we may have to do things differently. So I will leave it there, but definitely check out um, Patriot Nurse. The title of her premiere was You Deserve to Know, Here's What YouTube is Doing to Us. I can't think of a better title. So I'll leave it there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you guys tonight over on Twitch.